In this video for Math 94, we'll be covering problems from section 9.7 in the book, which are based on solving quadratic inequalities. These problems are like homework number 7, problems 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 14. So let's review a few ideas. Quadratic equation. We've learned and spent a lot of time with quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are real numbers. These we've solved using factoring in the zero product property, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. Now we're going to focus on what are called quadratic inequalities. Quadratic inequalities, like quadratic equations, have the form ax squared plus bx plus c, but instead of equals 0, we might use greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 0, greater than 0, or less than 0. Now, in Math 93, you did linear inequalities, and like linear inequalities, the solutions to a quadratic inequality will be over intervals. There will be infinitely many solutions, often, and they will usually be over intervals. So we'll be reviewing how to do that a little bit here. I also want you to know there are algebraic ways to do these. I believe your book goes through some methods of how to do that. However, we will focus on the graphical approach to do these. Let's start with this problem. x squared minus 3x minus 28 is less than or equal to 0. And I want you to think about the function x squared minus 3x minus 28. This is a quadratic function of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, notice that a here is equal to 1. Since a is greater than 0, this means this parabola opens up. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to find the x-intercepts. And if you remember, that's when x squared minus 3x minus 28 if I'm finding the x-intercepts, I want to know where y, or f of x, equals 0. And I'm going to solve this by factoring. All your problems on homework should be able to be done by factoring. You can use the quadratic formula if you want, but they should be easy enough to factor. The way I'm going to look at this is I know that x squared, I've got to have an x and an x here. There's no other choice. What are two numbers multiplied together at 28, two factors of 28? Well, you might think about 7 and 4. Now, since this middle term is negative 3, I'm going to go negative 7 plus 4. Now, solving, I get x minus 7 equals 0, or x plus 4 equals 0. Add 7 to each side, and I get x equals 7. Subtract 4 from each side, and I get x equals minus 4. This gives me the x-intercepts 7, 0, and negative 4, 0. Now, I want to draw a sketch of a graph of this function. I know that we have x-intercepts at 7, 0, and negative 4, 0. And I know that because a is greater than 0 here, this opens up. So I'm not even going to bother to find the vertex. It might be somewhere around here. But I know this opens up. And if I were to just think about the graph of f of x, equals x squared minus 3x minus 28, it would look like this, somewhat like that. Now, the question that we started with is when is x squared minus 3x minus 28 
less than or equal to zero? Well, we know that x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals zero at negative four and at seven. In between negative four and seven, in this case, the graph is below the x-axis. If the x-axis is zero, then this is where the graph is negative. It's negative right here. And the graph is above the axis off in these directions. So from negative 4 and down, and from 7 and up, it is positive. Now think about the original question. The original question was, when is x squared minus 3x minus 28 less than or equal to 0? Well, that's when it's either negative or 0. So just thinking about this, I know that this is between negative 4 and 7. And we include negative 4 and 7 because we have that less than or equal to property there. If you remember from earlier in this course, this gives me the interval bracket minus 4, 7, and bracket. And that's our solution. So it could be written this way or this way. Let's look at another one. So let's try this one. OK, I know that a is greater than 0 because it's in front of x squared here. So this one, again, points upward. And I'm going to factor this. Let's see if you can factor this. I have an x and an x here. And I want the factors of 18 that add up to 7. Well, what are two numbers that multiply together to 18? You might think of 2 and 9. I want this to be a minus 7, so I want that to be nine is minus 9 and plus 2. Now, for my x-intercepts, that gives me x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 9 equals 0. Subtract 2 from each side, that gives you x equals minus 2, or add 9 to each side, that gives you x equals 9. So my x-intercepts are minus 2, 0, and 9, 0. And I know that the graph goes up. So I'm going to draw a real quick sketch here. Minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are my zeros. I know that it goes up, so just drawing a very rough sketch. I know that looks something like that. Now, in this problem, I want it to be greater than 0, so I want it to be positive. Look at the graph. Where is the graph positive? Between negative 2 and 9, it is negative. The graph is below the x-axis, and the x-axis is when the function is 0. So it's below the x-axis there, but it's above the x-axis from 9 and onward, and it's above the x-axis less than negative 2. So, how do I write that out? I could say x is greater than 9 and x is less than negative 2. So I could write this, x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 9. I'll move that up a little bit. Or an interval notation, less than negative 2, remember, is negative infinity to negative 2 and greater than 9 is 9 to infinity. You can put this little union sign in there to mean or. If you want to check this on your graphing calculator, it's pretty easy to do. Turn your graphing calculator on, go over to y equals, clear out whatever you have there, and put in your function. In this case, I have x squared minus 7x minus 18. Now remember to set a window I need to go from 9, negative 2 to 9, so I might choose, excuse me, minus 5 to 10, counting by 1s. My y min and max, I don't really know um, what would be appropriate y min and max, but maybe let's go from like minus 20 to 20 just to start with and count by 2. If you look at your graph, 
you'll see that at negative 2 and 9, we're 0. In between, we are negative. And on the outskirts, when we're larger than 9 and less than negative 2, we are positive. Now, there are a few things that are tricky that can happen. Let's look at this example. Okay, once again, a is greater than 0, so this points up. And I'm going to factor this. So I'm going to have an x and an x. I need to factor 49, that add up to 14. That's 7 and 7. If you look at this, you'll notice that the x-intercepts are when x plus 7 equals 0 or x equals negative 7. So the only x-intercept is negative 7, 0. So if I were thinking about a graph of this, here's negative 7, 0. And that's the only place it crosses the x-axis and it's pointing upward. It has to look like this. Now, where is that greater than 0? Well, that's always greater than 0, except at the point negative 7. At the point negative 7, it is equal to 0. There's a couple of ways you can write this. You could say x is not equal to negative 7. Or you can use this fancy r. This fancy r means all real numbers. But you want to make sure you excluded negative 7, because negative 7 is a real number, too. You could also say negative infinity to negative 7. Notice a parentheses here. Union negative 7 to infinity. So this does not include negative 7, but includes all the other numbers. I'd like you to take a moment and try to solve this one by yourself. You might wish to pause the video and then just come back in a minute. Okay, let's factor this. I need an x and an x. Factors are 24 that add up to 2. Let's try 6 and 4. Minus 6 and plus 4. The middle terms will give me negative 2. And the last term will be negative 24. To find the x-intercepts, you set each of these equal to 0. You'll find they're at 6, 0 and negative 4, 0. So if I think about this, here's 6, 0. Here's a negative 4, 0. I know this is pointing up. So where is this? function less than 0. It's less than 0 in between here, between negative 4 and 6. So I would write my answer down like this. Notice no equal sign here. This was not equal here. We're not going to include those there as interval notation. I could use parentheses, negative 4, 6 parentheses. Okay, let's move on. What if you have a problem where 0 isn't on one side? Well, what you can do, remember, is move everything so that 0 is on one side. So I'm going to subtract x from each side. x squared. Be careful. Minus x minus x is minus 2x is greater than 35. Subtract 35. From each side. Factor. We use 7 and 5. So x equals 7 or negative 5. These lead us to the x-intercepts 7, 0 and negative 5, 0. If you think about a graph, here's negative 5, here's 7. Since this is greater than 0, we're looking for where it's above the x-axis. That happens here when x is greater than 7 or when x is less than negative 5. And I don't include 7 and negative 5 because I don't have an equal sign there. Now, last one. I'd like you to try this yourself. You might want to pause the video and then come back in a moment. 
Okay, let's add x squared. Subtract 16 from each side, 16x. And you say, wait a minute, I don't know how to do this. But remember, you can use the box method to help you factor if you need to. 4x squared minus 9. That's going to give me minus 36x okay, squared. What are the factors of minus 36x squared that add up to 16? Can you think of any? that would add up to 16. Well, you have 6 and 6, right? You have 4 and 9, okay? What else do you have? Um, you have 16, I'm sorry, 18 and 2, that ought to work, right? So 18x minus 18x and positive 2x. What can we pull out of this first row? We can pull out a 2 and an x. A 2 and an x there, a 1 here, a minus 9 here. So that gives you 2x plus 1, 2x minus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so that gives me my um, factoring. If I solve these, notice the x-intercepts are minus 1 half and 9 halves. So my x-intercepts or minus 1 half 0 and 9 halves 0. We want to be greater than or equal to 0. So 1 half might be right here. Sorry, minus 1 half might be right here. And let's just say 9 halves is maybe about right here. So these are my x-intercepts. This, because 4x squared, this 4 is positive. This is pointing up. And once again, we want this to be greater than or equal to 0. So you can see this is 9 halves to infinity or negative infinity to negative 1 half. I hope you find this video useful.